singer John Legend is advocating for more changing tables in men's restrooms. Grab your phones, we want to know what you think about that. Spokane Pride organizers say a huge turnout means they will need to make some changes to the event for next year. Organizers are happy, saying the culture is changing. The Spokane Indians are calling on the community today. The team is hosting its annual Fan Fest. Five a.m. on our Wednesday morning. Welcome to Creme Two Morning News. I'm Jen York. It's good to have you here with us. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Evan Narani. Good morning, everyone. We made it to hey. the middle part of the work week. Hump yeah. day. Yes, and welcome back to the program, hey, Tim. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah. I missed you guys. Another couple days you got with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three full days. There we go. <laughs> right, we are happy to have you for the good next three here. days at mm -hmm. least. And Evan, we're also happy to have you because I know you have something to tell us today. Yeah, well, it's very warm outside <laughs> and uh, in some cases gonna be the warmest day of the year here around the Northwest. Wow. So we've got a uh, fire weather watch in effect, a given mm -hmm. because of how hot it gets around us along with low humidity, gusty winds, not a great combination for firefighters. That's the perfect combination yeah. <laughs> for a fire. For a fire, yeah. exactly. So we'll talk about uh, what's going on for the rest of the day. Now those temperatures in some cases are gonna make their way to the 90s. Right now we're looking at about central Washington making their way there. Uh, Spokane going to rest just shy of it, likely in the upper 80s. So we're looking at uh, outside right now, a start to the day with uh, just some sunlight out there. The sun's slowly coming up. It came up just about a half hour ago and will continue to give us about almost 16 hours of full daylight as we are going on now single digits before uh, days before uh, the official start of summer. 12 hour forecast shows about 86 degrees in the afternoon around 4 p.m. Some clouds throughout the sky uh, as the day goes on. So not a fully sunny day ahead, but generally pretty clear conditions outside. Today's high temperatures though, take a look at where we're headed. 94 in Moses Lake, 91 in Ritzville, 96 down in Richland for this afternoon. 88 in Spokane and 87 in Coeur d'Alene. So a very warm day ahead. We've got, uh, again, that fire weather watch that we'll talk about in just a bit. But the big ideas that we've got, dry skies, a little bit of a breeze this afternoon. Upper 80s and 90s are in store for this afternoon and into tomorrow. And uh, warm and dry conditions persist all the way through this weekend into next week. Find out just how long this streak of warm and dry weather will stick around with us. We'll be talking about that in just a bit. Let's take a look at what is going on traffic wise. So far, we are not seeing anything uh, on the roads to note. Uh, we have uh, those area roadway cameras looking pretty good. I 90 is staying pretty clear and uh, yeah, should be able to head out at your normal speed. We jumped to it a little earlier, but uh, push the button. Yeah, <laughs> okay, ready, Michael? <laughs> now push the button. All right, Hello. thank you, Michael. Well done. All right, <laughs> Evan, thank you, of course. Uh, fire concerns yeah. high today, so we will be continue That's to right. watch that today. It is 5.02 now. Spokane police are asking for your help this morning locating two missing vulnerable adults. Police say the first man is in his 80s. He went missing from his home last night on the South Hill. He was last seen around 7 o'clock near South Mount Vernon Street and 31st Avenue. He went for a walk and has not returned. Yeah, and police also say he has Alzheimer's disease and is known to wander to nearby parks, and he also doesn't speak any English. SPD says the second missing man is in his 60s. He went missing from the 2500 block of East First Avenue. If you have any information on either of their whereabouts, you are urged to contact Crime Check at the number there on your screen. While people are talking about this next story here locally and across the nation, a Texas woman says she was recently kicked out of a city pool for breastfeeding in public. And I had a young lifeguard come from behind me and like bend over and was like, ma'am, are you, are you breastfeeding? And I was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. And he's like, well, you can't, you can't do that here. This is a public pool. Well, the woman said she was asked by the pool's manager to cover up as she was feeding her child. Then she said police arrived and asked her to leave. So this has a lot of people talking and some wonder if mothers here would be kicked out of a Spokane City pool for doing the same. Spokane Park Ranger Supervisor Justin Worthington says this would not happen at city pools or parks, and that is because breastfeeding is legal according to Washington state law. I would like to think that nothing like that would actually happen here. We train all of our rangers specifically to educate people that might complain about breastfeeding mothers about the law and that they're not actually breaking the law or doing anything wrong. As a new dad himself, Worthington says all are welcome at Spokane City Parks and Pools, including breastfeeding mothers. 
504 now. Singer John Legend is hoping to make a change for all the dads out there this morning. He is trying to get more changing tables installed in men's restrooms. Yeah, it turns out he's doing this because many men's restrooms actually don't come with one. And we want to know what you think. Should all men's restrooms come with diaper changing tables? Let us know by heading to creme.com slash vote or click on the vote now tab in the creme 2 app. I call this the piano solo. I call this the co-pilot. The laptop. No game. Dads have to resort to all these maneuvers because there's no changing stations in our restrooms. The singer says he was inspired by a social media post. It showed a dad having to squat in a public bathroom and change his son's diaper on his lap. Legend says he and his siblings were raised by a single dad. He says he understands that caring for children and the household are not just for moms. Yeah, in a new study, the diaper company Pampers found out that 9 out of 10 dads have gone into a public restroom that didn't have a baby changing table. So Legend decided to take action and he's now teaming up with Pampers and Koala Care to install 5,000 changing tables in men's restrooms across the U.S. and Canada. The goal is to have this done by 2021. And taking a look at the early results wow. for our Vote Now poll, should all men's restrooms come with a diaper changing table? 100% say, why don't they already? Overwhelmingly. <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of surprising. You would think that they would, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess, you know, some restrooms that they maybe they're newer and they just haven't installed them. I've also heard that they can also be very dirty too, so that's mm -hmm. maybe another step businesses have to take. Yeah, exactly. So, and we're also keeping that poll open too. If you want to weigh in this morning, you can also share your thoughts this morning on the Creme 2 social media channels as well. It is 5.06 now. Time now to check out what you need to know before heading out this morning. Leaders with the Spokane County Sheriff's Office want to extradite the husband of Arizu Kashifi. Now, investigators found her body last week inside a freezer in their apartment. Wahid Kashifi is now wanted in Spokane County for first degree murder. Investigators believe he took a plane to Dubai just days after his wife was last seen in Spokane. Happening this morning in Hong Kong, police used tear gas and pepper spray against protesters who have surrounded government buildings to oppose a controversial bill. The bill would allow criminal suspects in Hong Kong to be sent to trial in mainland China. This week's protest is one of Hong Kong's biggest protests in recent history. Experts say if the bill is passed, it could affect relations between Hong Kong and the U.S. The pilot of a helicopter that crashed on top of a Manhattan high-rise should not have been flying in limited visibility. FAA leaders say the pilot was only certified to fly when conditions were clear. The pilot crashed Monday on top of a 54-story building. Authorities say he also flew in restricted airspace where no aircraft is allowed. The pilot died in that crash. No one else was hurt. Spokane Indians fans can head down to Avista Stadium today for Fan Fest. This is a free event open to the community. Enjoy a day full of activities with the team, including player autographs and a home run derby. And for the kids out there, there are slides, bounce houses and face painting. At the end of the event, all kids are welcome onto the field to circle the bases. It's a family fun event starting at 5.30 tonight. The Spokane Indians home opener, by the way, is next Friday, June 21st. Sounds like a fun event, but also it's going to be pretty warm. Exactly. So definitely tank tops, shorts, sunscreen. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget the sunscreen. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Well, it's been more than four months since a University of Idaho professor made headlines. She was banned from the Moscow campus amid accusations she had been using meth. That prompted the school to send an alert to students and staff that the professor, Denise Bennett, was a threat. She was then placed on administrative leave. So where is Bennett now? A school spokeswoman says Bennett remains on leave but is still an employee. They could not comment further. U of I student paper reported Bennett was set to have a hearing before the school in May, but a former student says that has been postponed. She's still banned from campus. She's still blocked out of her email um, and still technically in her job just on leave. Um, so that's her main goal is to get back in the classroom. It's not clear what's next for Bennett or when she could return to the U of I. She previously told the Argonaut that uh, she was seeking legal action against the school. Benson says she cares about her students and those students feel ignored by U of I administrators. 
In a hearing room packed with first responders, comedian and activist John Stewart testified on their behalf. The official FDNY response time to 9-11 was five seconds. Five seconds. They did their jobs with courage, grace, tenacity, humility. 18 years later, do yours. You can tell an emotional response there. Stewart is angry that health care funding for 9-11 first responders and survivors has not been extended as the money begins to run out. He criticized Congress on Capitol Hill yesterday. The compensation fund has helped tens of thousands of people who inhaled deadly toxins at ground zero. He was joined by firefighters and police officers who developed cancer and other illnesses from 9-11. This fund is not a ticket to paradise. It is there to provide for our families when we can't. There is now bipartisan support for renewing these funds. Boy, his testimony sure went viral really yesterday online. It is 5-11 now on our Wednesday morning. Build-A-Bear is bringing back its popular Pay Your oh Age boy. promotion. <laughs> uh -huh. But after last year's chaos, remember that? <laughs> well, the company has a new plan to help with crowd control. The company says this year shoppers will need to sign up on the company's website for a chance to get a limited ticket. If you are one of the 200,000 lucky shoppers, you'll be able to cash in your ticket and just pay your age. Good deal there. No kidding, <laughs> yeah, and if you want a chance to win, you'd better hurry. You have until this Sunday to enter online. Those selected will then be notified. They will then be able to use those tickets between June 24th and the 28th. And this year, winners will be able to come in and get up to two Build-A-Bears for the deal. Wow, that's a good deal if you're not our age. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm, you're paying full price. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding, you're paying a lot there. I just remember the chaos last year. This is a look at the lines. Wow. I just remember it was so popular. I don't think I, anyone knew how crazy it would be. Right, I guess as a company, you think that, oh, this is going to attract a, a good amount of people. No one expected there to be such a frenzy. It was like Black <laughs> Friday. <laughs> yes, it really was. The lines were crazy. All right, it is 5-12 now. Well, Spokane Pride organizers say the turnout for this year's event was larger than expected. So they are getting ready to make some changes for the future. Yeah, and Creme 2's Kira L. Fallen is live in Riverfront Park this morning with more details on what one of the organizers is calling a wonderful problem to have. Good news, Kira. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Well, Pride in Spokane started in 1992 with just a couple of hundred people who were marching for that event on the sidewalks. Now organizers say they might need to make some changes next year with that much bigger turnout they saw. They saw about 27,000 people. Now in years past, event organizers say they've expected anywhere between 13,000 and 17,000 people. This year they were hoping to reach 20,000, but the turnout was way beyond that. One organizer says 27,000 people doesn't even sound real. To say that our jaws dropped when the Rangers told us is like an understatement. We can't even fit into the park anymore. Um, it, so that, that means, one, we are making history, but two, we literally have to shift what we're doing from this point on because that means that there's a portion of the population that's utilizing pride in a way that surpasses our capacity. Organizers have been talking over a few ideas like using multiple areas of the park and having more than one stage. Steven, who you just heard from, says he thinks the huge turnout this year is due to a shift in culture, meaning family members are becoming more accepting of their children and support for the LGBTQ community is growing. Now, organizers say a woman even came all the way from Chicago for this event. They also saw many people from Montana and Idaho and much of eastern Washington. I'm live here in Riverfront Park, Kiera L. Fallen. Crime 2 News. And I know it rained on last year's Pride weekend. It also rained this year, so the turnout still was right. remarkable. Can't blame the weather. Exactly. <laughs> and I can understand why people would uh, come to Spokane. There's not a lot of outlets maybe in eastern right. Washington, so maybe this is an opportunity for people to explore some resources here in Spokane. Yeah, and just the entire region, not even just eastern Washington. Yeah. You, like Kara was saying, people all the way from Montana That's pretty came remarkable. to visit. Kara to Spokane. All right, Kara, thank you again. It is 514 now. <gasps> I'm going to Boston.
Oh, a St. Louis Blues fan just got the invitation of a lifetime. We will share her story and why it means so much to her. It is Wednesday morning. We are seeing still some clouds in the sky, but those aren't going to stop those temperatures from warming up to the 80s and in some cases the 90s. We're talking also about fire weather right after the break. The Bible speaks of the ark leveling mountains and laying waste to entire regions. That's something to be taken lightly. The of the Lost Ark. No one knows. This 1981 George classic features the famous the line, the Snakes. Is. Why did it have to it's be Snakes? Another Indiana Jones movie wouldn't be released for three more years.